Welcome to Figure Feedback. My name is Jeremy and this is the Bamboo Lab A1 3D printer with the Bamboo Lab AMS mounted on top. Now this is the new and improved version of the Bamboo Lab A1, the one that comes with the updated and reinforced heat bed cable that was the subject to a recall some months back, but now they are back. They are back online, ready to ship, and Bamboo Lab was kind enough to send this one over to me to try out. And one of the things that I was really interested in trying out with this printer when it comes to figures is the quality of many figures that you can get right out of the box with this printer using the standard 0.4 millimeter nozzle that it comes with. So no additional purchases necessary. So hopefully this video will help you out if you had your eye on a Bamboo Lab A1 3D printer because you heard such wonderful things about Bamboo Lab and you are also interested in miniatures printing them as well as printing some terrain. I will tell you that the setup process for this printer, it is not difficult at all, but it's not something that you can do in five or 10 minutes. It does require just a little bit of assembly, nothing too crazy, but once you get it all nice and set up and you run the calibrations things theoretically should go very very well from that point on as it has been with me so far all of the terrain and miniatures that you see in this video were all printed using some regular stock settings. I haven't done anything fancy, though I will say that the Bamboo Lab AMS system did make things easier for me because I have four spools of filament loaded on here. And one of the big benefits of having the AMS is that you don't have to manually change filament when you want to get a different color. You can simply tell it what color you want to use in the slicer and it is going to automatically feed that color in for you. And the other benefit is if you're using the Bamboo Lab filament, such as the three that I have on here, right here, right here, and right here. These are RFID spools, which means the printer will be able to read these spools and it knows exactly what filament it is. It knows exactly what settings Bamboo Lab recommends that it uses in order to get the best prints possible. So that takes a lot of the guesswork out of doing all the tweaking and adjusting that you sometimes have to do with the new filament. So that's just an advantage of the AMS if you want to use the AMS, but Let's take a look at some of these miniatures and some of this terrain as well. Now for all these miniatures that I printed without supports, they were also printed at a 0.08 millimeter layer height so that I can get as much detail as possible from that standard 0.4 millimeter nozzle. And the only thing that I changed at that point is just the infill settings. Instead of using grid, I choose to use gyroid. And other than that, just let all the other settings just stay as they are. And you also notice that most of the miniatures that I printed were done in this sort of off-white, almost pinkish filament because I think that this type of filament really makes these figures stand out. It almost looks like a matte filament, but I don't think that it is. But you can get a little close up on some of the figures here that were printed with this filament. And I think that they came out looking really nice. Now I haven't done anything as far as post-processing is concerned outside of hitting some of the figures with a little bit of a uh, heat from a heat gun just to get rid of some of those wispy strings. I didn't do it for all of them, but I did do it with some of them. But other than that, everything is as it is. No sanding or anything like that. And as I look at this sort of larger guy here, I am really honestly impressed. Now, granted, you can still see the trademark filament uh, lines here and there in some aspects of him, especially when it comes to like the underneath parts of some aspects of his body. But just kind of looking at it at arm's length, you know, just not looking at it under a magnifying glass, he looks incredibly nice to be printed on FDM at standard speed settings. I didn't slow it down at all. This is just how he came out and he came out really, really nice. One of the other figures that I printed that required um, supports, for example, is this guy here with this cape that is flowing. Now, unfortunately, he did lose an arm in the process. I have no idea how that happened. It happened while it was printing, but the rest of him came out looking pretty darn good. And I love the way that that cape is flowing. And again, with this type of filament, I'm really seeing Honestly, you know, a little bit more detail than I thought I was going to get, especially from the 0.4 millimeter nozzle. And then for some of the other colors, for example, this archer here that I printed with this green bamboo lab filament. Um, 
the detail of his chainmail armor you can see that it's still pretty nicely defined and separated everything didn't just mush together and become really you know just kind of molded all in one you can see the individual aspects of his whole getup there's a dagger right there there's another one right there i can see the loops on his belt i can see the the strap that's around his wrist that's holding that bow in place. You know, these figures came out looking pretty darn good from this printer with those regular standard settings. And the larger that these figures are, the nicer that they appear, at least to me, because I think it just gives, um, it gives the printer a little bit more to work with, for example, like this guy here holding this stick. When I hold up him, in this sort of barbarian looking guy here i think these are two of the best in my opinion and especially on this guy you can actually see the smiling expression on his face even printed with filament he's got a little bit of strings here and there but i didn't use the hot the hot heat gun on him and again yeah it just looks great the color doesn't really matter too much in the end especially if you plan on painting your miniatures your chances are you're going to prime them with some spray paint or something and they're all going to end up the same color in the end before you actually start putting paint onto them but just right off of the print bed really nice quality and i'm very happy about that now let's also take a look at some of this terrain now this terrain was also printed 0 .0 0 0.2 millimeter layer height just the standard layer height for that nozzle and i didn't change anything else just regular stl files i dropped it into the bamboo slicer changed the infill to gyroid slice send it to the printer do what you do and these came out looking really good this is in the silver filament which would explain why it has this sort of shimmer shine to it and then over on the bottom we can take a look at that first layer perfect it's a perfect first layer you know these machines uh, people really tout them for just giving some really amazing prints in the time that I've been using it I can definitely vouch for it not just on this but on some other things that I printed that maybe I'll show in uh, different videos as well but again Perfect first layer, it's got the logo for the creator on the bottom of it. You know, once again, link's gonna be in the, in the description for it. And I printed out these six dungeon tiles. Some have walls. Um, this one has this ladder right here that I thought might need supports for the bridging, but it turns out it didn't. And it came out pretty, it came out mostly good. We still see a little bit of uh, filament that's just sort of curled up as it was trying to make that gap in between these two pillars of this ladder, but for the most part turned out pretty darn good. And then we can also see some nice detail on the skulls down there at the bottom. And then there's also these trap tiles. It's got these buzz saws here, again, all printed without supports. You can see the bones nice and clearly here. And you know, I think, again, bottom layer looks perfect. And it is a very nice result. Now, mind you, it's not like printing with resin, you know, because resin is still gonna be the superior medium for printing either miniatures or terrain. You're gonna get the most detail out of it. You're gonna see uh, much fewer layer lines and imperfections where the supports aren't going to be compared to when you use FDM. That's just how it is. But also understand that a lot of people don't have the setup necessary to print with resin because it is very poisonous to the touch and it's not so great to breathe. And you have to worry about cross-contamination and disposal of different chemicals and stuff like that. Whereas something like this, you can just print in your bedroom, in your kitchen, you know? And as long as you're not printing with ABS, you can breathe just fine. But anyway, I say that to say that when you look really closely on these tiles, especially on the top layer, you can still see the remnants of what FDM printing can currently do. So you can see a little bit of the lines, a little bit of little loops and stuff here and there but it's totally acceptable and it's totally fine because the quality is still very nice, especially if you want to hit this with a coat of primer, maybe some black primer, dry brush it in gray, get some random colors for your stones, a little black wash, a little bit of green here and there. You can really make this look awesome. In fact, I'm even right now, I'll put up a quick little picture of something that I printed a long time ago that had a similar effect with different color bricks and wood and things like that to show you what is possible when you try to paint FDM. You can still get a really good result out of it just like you can with resin.
Now, as far as timing, how long did it take for me to print these? Well, for the miniatures, on average, they took about an hour to print. And I printed them one at a time just to see how it would turn out. So around an hour for each of these miniatures to print by themselves. Of course, you can print multiple figures on the build plate at the same time if you wanted to, but I just did it one at a time. I uh, fortunately did not experience any failures on any of these um, any of these miniatures, at least not a complete failure. Like I said, this guy lost an arm, but as far as needing to start the print all over again and, and trying to make sure that the bed is clean and stuff like that, I didn't have to worry about that at all. There's something about this gold PEI build plate that apparently they're now shipping with these um, updated Bamboo Lab A1 printers that is just, I guess, really, really good and better than the black one that they had before. And I can attest to that. When stuff sticks to this plate, it sticks really, really good. And when the temperature goes down to like 30 degrees Celsius, things pop off pretty easily. But until then, even when you bend it, it does not want to come off. So that is great for adhesion, especially for little figures like this. If you wanna just make sure that base is gonna stick nice and secure to that build plate, this gold texture PEI um, build plate is darn good, let me tell you. So, so far, my experience with printing miniatures on this machine, as well as this terrain, has been an absolute joy. I haven't had to worry about anything. Everything just sorta of worked out. And I'm happy with the details that this was able to capture using the 0.4 millimeter nozzle. I know that I can get even better details with a smaller nozzle that I don't have, but I do plan on getting. And let me know down in the comments if you'll be interested in a video like that. Printing miniatures and or terrain using the smaller nozzle that Bamboo Lab sells. And then we'll be able to do a comparison between the 0.4 and the 0.2. But if you are just trying to see what the standard quality is with what you get out of the box, well, here you go. I'm pretty sure you're not gonna be disappointed. So that's it for now, and I do wanna thank you all so much for watching. This is not gonna be the only video that I make about the Bamboo Lab A1 printer. I'm gonna make some more videos showing off some different aspects of it, especially the multicolor printing aspect of it, because you know that's one of the big selling points for this printer and the AMS light that I currently have sitting on top. So if you wanna see more videos about that and what I can do with it, be sure to subscribe so that you always be in the know for when that happens. And that should be coming up in the very near future. So until then, take care of yourselves and I'll speak to you soon.